Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 3.2 osmosis. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 3.2 you need to be able to describe the role of water as a solvent in organisms, understand the term osmosis and how it applies to the movement of water into and out of cells, and investigate osmosis using dialysis tubing, plant tissues and solutions of different concentrations. For extent you also need to describe osmosis with reference to water potential, understand four terms relating to osmosis in plant cells, and explain the importance of water potential and osmosis in the uptake and loss of water by organisms. So water is the most abundant molecule in the human body and has a number of very important roles to play. It's an excellent solvent, which means it dissolves substances to create a solution. One such water-based solution is the blood plasma, which transports carbon dioxide, nutrient molecules, hormones, and blood cells. In plants, water transports dissolved mineral ions from the soil to the leaves in xylem vessels and glucose from the leaves to where it's stored in phloem vessels. In animals, water helps to break down food molecules by a chemical reaction called hydrolysis. It then dissolves the smaller molecules so that they can pass through the intestinal wall and into the bloodstream. Water is also a solvent for waste products like urea, used hormones and excess minerals. It has a diluting effect, reducing their toxicity and transports them out of the body via the urine. In order for water to perform its functions, it needs to be able to move into and out of cells and this occurs by osmosis. So, osmosis is the diffusion of water across a partially permeable membrane and is the mechanism by which water moves into to and out of cells. In our last lesson, we learned that molecules always diffuse from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, that is, down a concentration gradient. A dilute solution contains more water molecules than a concentrated solution. So if a dilute solution is separated from a concentrated solution by a partially permeable membrane, that is, one that allows certain molecules through but not others, water will diffuse across the membrane from the dilute to the concentrated solution. In living cells, the cell membrane is partially permeable permeable, and the cytoplasm and vacuole in plant cells contain dissolved substances. This means that if a cell is surrounded by a weak solution with lots of free water molecules, water will diffuse into the cell by osmosis. Likewise, if the cell is surrounded by a concentrated solution like salt water, water molecules will move in the other direction and the cell will lose water. In plants, osmosis is crucial for maintaining cell pressure. Plant cells are surrounded by a freely permeable inelastic cell wall and a partially permeable cell membrane. If a plant cell is bathed in water or a solution more dilute than its contents, water molecules will diffuse into the vacuole by osmosis, causing it to expand and push outwards against the cytoplasm and cell wall. When plant cells have taken in as much water as their inelastic cell walls allow, they become rigid and their stems and leaves are supported. Likewise, if water is lost from the cells, the vacuole contracts, cell pressure decreases and the plant becomes limp and wilts. Next, you need to know how to conduct two types of experiments on osmosis, the first of which involves something called visking or dialysis tubing. So dialysis tubing is partially permeable and can therefore be used to mimic the effects of osmosis in cells. Start by adding a strong sugar solution to a length of tubing, tie at one end and secure to a capillary tube with an elastic band. Making sure that the solution has entered the capillary tube, cover the dialysis tubing with water and observe for 10 to 15 minutes. Over time, we would expect to see the level of liquid in the capillary tube rise as water molecules from the beaker move down a concentration gradient and into the concentrated solution within the tubing. The second experiment involves immersing plant tissues in solutions of different concentrations. Prepare five potato cylinders using a cork borer and cut them all to the same length. Prepare five different sucrose solutions and add them to labeled test tubes. Weigh each of the cylinders in turn, record their mass and place them in the test tubes. After a minimum of 30 minutes, remove, surface dry and reweigh the cylinders. You can then calculate the percentage change in mass of each cylinder and plot the results on a graph. We would expect the cylinders in the weaker solutions to gain mass and feel firm. One of the cylinders may show little or no change in mass, while those in the concentrated solutions are likely to lose mass and feel limp as water moves out of their cells by osmosis. 
Okay, so that's everything you need to know for the core section. So we'll move on now to look at the extended content. For extended, you need to understand osmosis in a little more detail. The Cambridge syllabus requires you to describe osmosis as the net movement of water molecules from a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential through a partially permeable membrane. So a region of high water potential is one that has a high proportion of free water molecules, while a region of lower water potential contains dissolved substances like sugars and salts that attract water molecules and stop them from moving freely. Water molecules will move in both directions through the membrane, but since the dilute solution has a higher water potential, more will move from the left to the right than in the other direction. Now the sugar molecules can diffuse from right to left, however they're bigger and move far slower, so there's still a net or overall movement from left to right. Next, you need to understand four terms that relate to osmosis and cell pressure in plants. So when a plant cell takes up water, the vacuole expands and puts puts pressure on the inelastic cell wall. This pressure is known as turga pressure, and a fluid-filled pressurized cell is referred to as a turgid cell. If the vacuoles lose water, the cells will lose their turga pressure and become flaccid. The process of losing water molecules from the cells is known as plasmolysis. In our potato experiment, the dilute solutions had a higher water potential than the fluid within the potato cells. As a result, plasmolysis occurred, meaning water molecules were lost from the cells. This reduced the turga pressure exerted by the vacuoles, causing the cells to become flaccid and the potato to feel limp. Finally, you need to be able to explain the importance of water potential and osmosis in the uptake and loss of water by organisms. As animal cells have no cell wall, it's important that the fluid in which they bathe, like the blood plasma or tissue fluid, has the same water potential as the cell contents. If the bathing fluid has a higher water potential than the cells, water will enter by osmosis, causing them to expand and eventually burst. Likewise, if the fluid has a lower water potential than the cells, the cells will become plasmalized and their function will be impaired. The brain monitors and the kidneys adjust the water potential of the blood. This keeps the concentration of the tissue fluid relatively constant and prevents cells from swelling or shrinking excessively. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 3.2, osmosis. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription and I'll see you next time for topic 3.3, active transport.